More from Armando Torres, The Universal Spider Web. This chapter is called The Word. It's interesting to notice how words have lost their power. In the past, one strand of a mustache was enough to confirm an agreement. Unfortunately, that special kind of honesty has been lost. And that's the reason for the shameful bureaucracy of having to sign papers to force the fulfillment of what has been said. It seems like a simple thing, but that's the reason why people have alienated so far from the spirit. Words are extraordinarily important for sorcerers because they consider to be the key of intent. They're magical. Said in the correct sequence, words can open any door. Once one's word has been given, a commitment is made, a personal or collective bid. This is how we commit our will to others. And in that way, it's possible to construct our world. Now, if for any reason somebody fails to uphold his word, he harms himself because acting in that way weakens his will and muddles his connecting link with the spirit. The danger of lies is that they predispose one to fail. Once you propose to do something, in some way you summon intent. And if for any reason you have second thoughts about your resolution, you weaken your bond with the spirit. By failing time and time again to live up to your word, you get so far removed from the spirit that it ends up literally scaring it away. And the connection becomes almost impossible. Only living the strong life of the warrior allows the spirit to express itself through their actions. This is what I mean when I speak of you, of cleaning your bond with intent. And what can I do about my past failures? Well, that's what I mean when I speak to you about retracing your steps to recover and claim your energy. Only in this way is it possible to reconcile. People should be very cautious about what they say or what they decide because every time we make a decision, it sets off a cascade of events that, if we're not prepared, it can very well mean our end. For that reason, sorcerers are very deliberate with their words and decisions. Once they've made a decision, they don't stop until they've fulfilled it in its totality. They don't leave anything unsettled or leave it to chance. For a warrior, failure is not an option. You must be very careful with what comes out of your mouth because carelessly blurting out a word can create or destroy. It's like a fire that begins with a single spark but can unleash forces as destructive as a forest fire. One bad word can poison and even lead to the grave. A great part of our personal importance comes from the mouth by means of words loaded with arrogance and bad intention. The necessity to gain recognition fruit of personal importance, that at the bottom is only a disguise for self-pity, makes people vulnerable unnecessarily, many times even putting their own lives at risk. Sorcerers use intent to utter a word like one throws a spear, using incantations in ways that can cure, honor a friend, or destroy an enemy. The way of the sorcerer is to wait for the opportune moment to let out what they have been storing, he said. And what if the moment doesn't come? Then they don't say anything. They simply follow the orders of the spirit. It's necessary to take into account that sometimes a piece of information can cause more harm than benefit. What's the point in contaminated information that only makes you weaker? Thoughts of hate, violence, or low instincts are contrary to the path of the warrior that aspires to freedom. Words are of great importance for sorcerers because they know that these convey great power and great responsibility. For that reason, they avoid speaking rashly. Personal importance is what induces people to go through long, tiresome speeches in which many times they lose control with one topic leading to another, and they're not able to stop until they've forgotten what they were talking about in the first place. They're like mirrors that show the same image time and time again without end. There are compadritos, who could be compared to a drum. They make a lot of noise, but they're hollow inside. They speak only to speak, like a clown who speaks a lot but doesn't say anything. It's very unpleasant to those people who rudely interrupt one's speech, such as the ego that rushes in, and they lose out due to their bad upbringing. In conversations, there are pauses, moments of silence, 
the ideal time to make some comment. However, moderation dictates that we analyze and understand the topic that is being discussed before we make some observation. If you don't have any outstanding thing to contribute, you'd better keep silent. Intent is manifested in everything. If you pay attention to what happens, you'll see that everything in your surroundings tells you something. The smile of a child, a look, the gesture of a hand, always being attentive to the attitude more than the words. It says a lot if you observe it. The word doesn't just serve as a way of communication among people. It can also be used to contact the spirit. It's sad, but we've converted an excellent means of connection with the spirit into the nonsensical chattering of the mind. To a very real extent, words are magical because, as in poetry, what counts is not the words themselves, but the intention that is hidden among them. It's important to remember that intent doesn't react in a direct, but rather in an indirect way, which is to say that one should use subterfuges when trying to intend. The way that anyone gets connected with intent is a personal matter. However, there's an invariable pattern that is known and applies equally to everyone, and it's called the path of the warrior. That's because it consists of a series of challenges to be overcome. Among the challenges is the necessity to save energy because if one walks on this path to knowledge, the first thing that should be done is to save energy and at the same time to combat personal importance and to live an impeccable life because intent only arrives when the warrior is able to act impeccably. To do the recapitulation, to put their tonal in order, and all the rest, those actions facilitate the process of connection. All the strategies of the path of the warrior are designed precisely to achieve that end. With the subtlety and creativity that some birds display when they look for a partner, the warrior also uses all available strategies to attract the attention of intent. Without sparring any effort, he uses all resources at his disposal. Maybe the spirit could be compared with a wild animal. It takes time to win its trust. One should go slowly, and one must know when to advance and when to retreat until the friendship is formed. It's a matter of trying to conquer the spirit in the same way that you flirt with a pretty girl, with expressions of affection, generosity, good humor, beauty, and grace. When you succeed in the same way, you offer your life to the spirit.